Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Couch. I'm Pastor Lee. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. This is our online version of worship. We call it Couch Church. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to week three of Fearless. We're focusing on how to face our fears, how to face our fears. Uh, you're also joining us for a special day where we offer a backpack blessing to all our students that are listening in, watching. Uh, if you have a backpack, you might want to press pause and you might wanna go get your backpack and bring it back. And uh, we have a special blessing in store for you in a few minutes. Fears in life, we all have them, if we're honest. Fears make us question everything. I mean, it's all those what if questions. What if I lose my job? What if I won't measure up? What if I'm not successful? What if my marriage won't last? What if bad things happen to my kids? What if I get cancer? All these what ifs. Fear has a way of questioning us. Uh, we ask questions about ourselves. We ask questions about God. We ask questions about our future, and it makes us doubt. So have you ever thought about it this way? Fears make us question ourselves and God and our future. Have you ever thought about questioning your fears? Fight back with your own questions. Have you ever thought about it this way? Here's some questions to get you started. Have you ever questioned your fears? Who's bigger, God or your problem? Who's bigger, God or your fear? Who loves you with a everlasting love, a love that never ends, a love that never fails? Who promised you eternal life through his one and only son in a place where fear doesn't even exist? Who made you part of his family through your faith in Christ? Uh, and you have to know your Old Testament stories to maybe answer these questions, but I think you know the answer. Who knocked down the walls of Jericho? Who parted the Red Sea? Who got Joseph out of prison? Who saved Noah from the flood? Who uh, really took on Goliath and took him down? Who died on the cross for all of your sins? Who defeated Satan, sin, and death? Who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Those are just a few questions you can ask your fears. And so today, as we gather together again in this series called Fearless, we're reminded of Psalm 23, the words that are, are quite famous to, and, and some of us have heard them growing up and almost have them memorized. Uh, verse 4 of Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The word comfort comes from a Latin word fortis, and fortis means strength or strong. Um, so the word comfort, fortis, is derived from the word that means strong. So to comfort means to come alongside to give someone strength, to strengthen them. In Psalm 23, the picture is this, the Lord as our shepherd coming alongside of us as, our sh as we the sheep, and he comes alongside to strengthen us in times of fear and in times of uncertainty. So welcome to week three of Fearless. Today we'll focus on how to face our fears, especially when hard times come our way. So let's bow our heads, let's pray. God, our merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the beginning of a new school year. We turn to you at this time of year. Be with us today and always. Be with our students and our teachers and administrators. Open our ears to hear your voice today. Open our hearts to grow in love as we listen and respond to your word of promise today. We pray for comfort. We pray that you guide us and lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. 
our Lord and our shepherd. Amen. Okay, are you ready for our backpack blessing? I hope you brought your backpack along. 
I'm really curious how you're feeling today. How are you guys today? And I want you to use your thumbs to communicate to me how you're doing today. So are you guys feeling good? You can use one thumb or two thumbs. Are you feeling bad? Are you feeling a little bit good, a little bit bad? Or are you feeling kind of everything, kind of all over the place? You can do this with your thumbs if you're feeling all over the place. All right, how are you feeling? Hands up if you're feeling excited about the beginning of a school year, the new school year, are you excited? Hands up if you're feeling a little bit worried. Are you feeling a little bit worried? Maybe a little bit nervous? Uh, are you feeling strong? Hands up if you're feeling strong today. Hands up if you're feeling tired. Tired today. Are you feeling a little tired? Did you just get out of bed? Did you just wake up? Or are you feeling hungry? Hands up if you're feeling hungry. All right. However you're feeling, I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad it's the beginning of a new school year. There's so much uh, newness to experience as you maybe are going to a new school. Maybe you're... Uh, have a new teacher. Maybe you're making some new friends. Maybe you haven't met any new friends yet. Uh, maybe you've spent a lot of time at home the last year, but now you're going to school instead of learning at home. Uh, there's so much going on. And you could be feeling all sorts of things. You might be feeling happy. You might be feeling sad. You might be feeling nervous. You might be feeling uh, hopeful or strong all at, all at the same time. Uh, it doesn't really matter. God loves you no matter how you're feeling. And did you know that God is with you wherever you go and no matter how you're feeling? God is with you as you head into this new school year. And so we wanted to share with each of you, all the students that are watching, whether you're in preschool or kindergarten or grade one, all the way up to grade 12, uh, maybe you're even in university watching this, uh, we want to share with you this little uh, tag for your backpack. It says, God's got your back. And what that means is God is always with you. God is always watching over you. God is always giving you the strength that you need to get through some of those things that make us nervous or afraid, or even the things that we're excited for and looking forward to. God's got your back. I'd like to share a special blessing with all of you. And uh, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what school you're going to, or maybe you're uh, learning from home, uh, here's a special blessing for you. May the Lord bless you. And may this school year, may you, be, may, may you be curious and kind, gentle and strong, brave and loving. May you know that God always has your back. Remember the word of the Lord that says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who? Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Bubbly, 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 who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, 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 who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea, bubbly, 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 splash. Let's spend a minute together praying for not only our, our students, but everybody involved in education. Let's take a moment to pray. Let's pray. 
Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these backpacks and the children and the youth who carry them as they begin yet another school year. Give them peace when they feel nervous, focus when they feel distracted, energy when they feel tired. Help them with the lessons they will learn both in and outside the classroom. Help them to make friends that build one another up and be friends to those who need them. Guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. Be ever present with them in the classroom, on the school bus, on the playground, and at home. And may they feel your loving care in all they do. Help them know that they can always have a best friend who cares for them and is with them in Jesus. We pray also not only for our students, but we pray for our administrators, for our educational assistants, for our support staff, and everybody else involved in education. We pray for our families and for our parents. We ask that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been focusing on Psalm 23 uh, the last number of weeks now. And we continue and we reinforce these words so that at some point these words are just ingrained in us and we mem have them memorized and they're on our heart and in our minds. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, I'd like to welcome all of you here today. Uh, I want you to think of this time as your own personal retreat. It's time for you to slow down. Slow down the thoughts of our minds and the feelings of our hearts. Time to slow down to hear God's word, listen to him, refocus on the God who loves you who, and who wants to talk to you and who is doing a good work in you. Spend time hearing from him, learning from him, and finding rest for your soul. We've been talking about fears quite a lot the last number of weeks. Fear of missing out was last week. Fear of running out was the week before. And today we're talking about facing our fears, particularly when we're faced with hard times. The Lord is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, verse 1 and verse 4. King David wrote this. This is the promise that God will lead us through hard times. Before King David was King David, King David was Shepherd David. And David knew the role of the shepherd to care for his sheep. And here's what he's saying, essentially. The king of the universe, the creator of the universe, God himself, at his very heart, is a shepherd who cares for his flock. This precious promise is for you, it's, it's for your kids, it's for all of us. And David, who wrote this psalm, is under no illusion at all that we would somehow miraculously escape hard times. The valley of the shadow of death, it does come. Even now, we're living in a shadow. Doesn't it feel that way? We're living under a shadow. It's a very difficult time for so many. The comfort here is that we don't have to go through this valley alone. Yes, there's evil in the world. Yes, dark valleys are going to come, but evil cannot have the world and evil cannot have us with God as our good shepherd. At times like this, we turn to our heavenly father, our good shepherd, and we ask him for help. And I just wonder what were the first thoughts uh, uh, as you woke up this morning? Was it a prayer for help? Have you asked the Lord, the Good Shepherd, for help today? You can do that right now. That's what today is all about. You know, we care for our kids. We care for our grandkids. We care for the kids and families that belong to our very own Little Lambs Christian Preschool. We care for our educators 
administrators, teachers, educational assistants, custodians, and support staff. The Lord is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, verse 1 and verse 4. Though I walk through the valley. Now, valleys can be beautiful. Have you ever been on a vacation to a place that has beautiful valleys? When I think of valleys, I think of this valley. We'll show a picture of this valley that I'm thinking of. It's the Okanagan Valley. And Michelle, my wife, and I toured this valley at least once a year when we lived in West Kelowna. Looks like a pretty scary place, doesn't it? Uh, not really. Uh, but when we think about valleys, we mostly think about nice scenery because that is all some of us have ever experienced. For sheep, though, valleys are more than just pretty pictures. They can be dangerous places. In, in the psalm that we just read, in the Psalm 23, we picture something different, uh, a very dark and shadowy valley, kind of like this one uh, that we'll put up on the screen now. Uh, this is a picture of Wadi Kelt Valley. It's deep, it's narrow, it's closed in, it's treacherous, it's a narrow gorge cutting through the Judean wilderness. It's rugged, mountainous area in the West Bank area, east of Jerusalem. And you can see in the picture a monastery that was built on the side very precariously. Uh, it was built in the fourth century and built along the, the northern face of the Wadi Kelt Valley for thousands of years. Think about this. Travelers between Jerusalem and Jericho have followed this 17 mile long path through the Wadi Kelt Valley. And it's said that this is likely the inspiration for King David to write Psalm 23, a very narrow, dark, shadowy kind of valley. People who walk through the Wadi Kelt, although it was likely a shortcut, would likely face danger, danger from falling because it's so steep, wild animals, thieves hiding in caves along the route. And I want you to watch this video clip now. I want you to watch this video clip and get a sense of the terrain and think about this. If, if a herd of sheep were led down into the low-lying parts of the valley to get a drink of water, how do you think it would go for the sheep if their shepherd wasn't with them to guide them through? Uh, have a look at this video clip now.
So even though we aren't shepherds and even though we aren't sheep, we know what it can feel like to be in a dangerous valley where life feels threatened and where life not only feels threatened, it actually is threatened. We know what it's like when we're sick or when a friend or relative dies or if we've been in an abusive relationship or we struggle with an addiction or we've been in a serious accident, whatever it is, we know what it means to face hard times or we know loved ones who are facing hard times or friends of ours. We've had to face some of our worst fears. Some of you have really opened up over the last couple of weeks with me. Uh, you've been honest with me uh, since we started this message series a couple weeks ago. Uh, you've shared with me some of your fears. You've admitted that there are some real fears that you have. Um, shepherds carry a rod and a staff to protect their sheep. And the writer David of Psalm 23, he knew that in the same way, God will protect him uh, and he can trust God even in the darkest valleys. Uh, you might be going through hard times right now. It might be the valley of the shadow of death for you or the valley of the shadow of debt or the valley of the shadow of conflict or the valley of the shadow of depression or the valley of the shadow of discouragement. Shadows are scary. And I remember as a kid being deathly afraid of the dark. I remember being afraid of shadows when I was lying in bed as a kid. But we've learned a few things about shadows as we mature, right? We learn, first of all, that shadows can't hurt you. If you're waiting for the bus and the bus pulls up on a sunny day and the shadow of the bus hits you, the shadow isn't going to hurt you. Second, we know that shadows generally look bigger than the actual source. And here's some more good news. Wherever there's a shadow, there has to be light. You can't have a shadow without light. So the key is when you're going through the valley of the shadow of anything, turn your back on the shadow and look at the light. Because as long as we focus on the light, Jesus, the light of the world, the shadow won't scare you. The shadow won't harm you. That's how we face our fears. A first century Jesus follower by the name of Paul, uh, we've heard from Paul last week too in last week's message. Romans 8.31, Paul writes this, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? That's Romans 8.31. Paul is basically saying, if God is on our side, who or what could ever be against us? Now, that is saying quite something, isn't it? God's on my side? Have you ever thought of your life in that way, that God is actually on your side? You're thinking, well, I never thought of it that way. That's right. Well, how can I know for sure that God is for me and not against me? Well, it's because of the person of Jesus, who he is and what he's accomplished as our great shepherd, and so Paul continues on then, and he fills out his argument as to why uh, nothing can ever be against us. He writes this in Romans 8:34 to 35. He says, Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he's sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love. And I know how King David would word it, and you've heard these words already, the Lord is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The writer of the letter to the Christians in Rome 2,000 years ago wonders out loud as well, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? all those fears that we've been talking about today, all those worries, all those what ifs, the answer for Paul is no. Despite all these things, all these things that make us question ourselves, all these fears that we face, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Romans 8:37. So remember this as you turn away from your fears, Practice it. Try it. 
you might like it. Turn away from your fears and you look to the light of Jesus, the light of the world, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. It's because of Jesus, you know that you're not alone in the valley. God is with you. God will lead you through the valley. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's a powerful word. The word through, it reminds us, it gives us hope that we're actually going to make it through the hard times, whatever we're going through right now. Facing our problems, facing our fears, facing hard times, whatever it is, God is at work leading you through these times. When you're scared by the shadows in your life, you just need to turn around and look at the light. Stop focusing on the things that are scaring you to death, those bills, those worries, that virus, past failures, current conflicts. God, through faith in his one and only Son, promises to lead you through. The one who went through the valley himself, when he went to the cross, who entered death and then came out alive on the third day. Because the point of living a Christian life isn't a life that's just free of problems. That's not realistic, and that's not the Christian life. The Christian life is all about living a life with Jesus, our Good Shepherd, guiding us, providing us His grace, His forgiveness, His strength, and His mercy. Amen? Amen. Uh, thanks for joining us today for Couch Church. We're really glad that you're here. I pray that you're encouraged. God be with you. God is with you. He leads you through the valley. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Bubbly, 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 who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubbly, 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 who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea, bubbly, 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 splash. <laughs>